The pseudo set to deal. I remove the aces from the deck. And then we turn those aces face up in different positions in the middle of the deck. Now, now deal those aces from their very positions in the deck. Hi, I'm Daniel Madison and this is the pseudo center deal. Hi, I'm Daniel Madison and this is the pseudo center deal. This is deceptively deceptive. The demonstration itself is a deception. What we are presenting is not actually what is happening. Two girls were talking about the devil. One of them said to the other, don't be silly. It's just like Santa Claus. It's just your dad. These are four gaff playing cards. Aces on one side, queens on the other. This is the first part of the secret. These are the aces that you are seeing going into the center of the deck in different positions. The actual aces from the deck are hidden at the bottom of the deck for the purposes, for the sake of this demonstration to appear more realistic. I put them one up from the deck. So they are at the very bottom of the deck with one playing card in their way, the nine of clubs. This allows me to hide those aces when I close the deck and show you the bottom of the deck. Subtly, when you see the bottom of the deck, you think, can't be a bottom deal because we've seen the bottom playing card. I'm replacing a bottom deal in this case with a Greek deal, which is the art of secretly dealing playing cards from underneath the bottom card of the deck whilst apparently fairly dealing them from the top. Because these aces have queens, on the other side. When I insert them into the deck, they appear to be face-up aces, but as soon as I turn the deck face down, they are reversed and you see the queens. So when you look through that spread deck looking for either aces or face down or reversed playing cards, you actually can't see what's right in front of you, which is the queens, which you don't know what you're looking for. The queens from the deck, I'm removing them and keeping them away from the deck. This is so that the deck is not any thicker, which might affect the performance of Slide of Hand, but also might be noted by any onlookers that the deck is slightly thicker. One discrepancy in this is how are we going to reveal these aces in a way that we don't show the backs of them without them being obvious. Um, for me, this, is, was, this was a very simple idea which also further enhances the deception. All we have to think about is hiding those aces at the bottom of the deck and then not showing the backs of these aces. The way that we do this, I close the deck. When I spread, I'm overreaching with my thumb here so that when I spread, I'm not spreading those bottom playing cards because if I do that, the secret is revealed or the first secret is revealed. So to begin this, before I even start, before I show you the trick, I have already buried the aces in the deck, in separate parts of the deck. One, two, three, four. And now I lose them in the deck. So if I spread the deck without spreading past those cards here, because I don't want to reveal that secret, the aces appear to be just a normal part of the deck. If I were to spread the deck this way, not only would you see these aces, even if I hit them, you would see four face-up queens, which would not make sense to anybody. So I start in this position, warm my hands up, turn the deck over, and I'm gonna spread the cards. Remember, my thumb overreaches so that I don't overspread accidentally showing those cards. And at every ace, I simply up jog. One, two, three, four. Take them out, place them face up, spread them like this. As I've taken the aces away from the deck, I'm leaving the deck face up so that this nine of club subconsciously sinks in. Now when I turn the deck face down, I have two options. One, I can spread the deck across the table and put the aces in that way. This way is more dangerous because I have to hide those aces. If I spread in this manner so that I've left the slug at this end, a chunk at this end, 
to me, this looks a little bit suspicious because you have this fair and even spread and then you have this strange clump at the bottom. This is why in the demonstration of this very video, I do a fan. A fan allows me to control where I begin that fan from. If I do a fan from the very bottom of the deck, I reveal the aces. If I simply move my finger up a little bit more, I can make it look like an even spread. Meanwhile, I'm hiding those four aces at the bottom of the deck. Just a, a simple little bit of practice will help you achieve this sufficiently. Now I'm going to take the aces. One, two, three, four separate parts of the deck. Note that I have not shown you the back of these aces. Note that when you watch back on this performance or you perform this yourself, that you do not have to. Showing the back of the deck a number of times in this performance will allow the participant, the audience, to believe that this is all true and fair because we removed these from this deck, therefore they must be of this deck. Now I close the fan. Um, in a very strange way, usually you would close a fan from this side inwards, but I'm going to close it towards my audience like this. This is to keep it fair so that my audience can see those aces at any time. If I close it this way, it looks like some slight could have happened and I don't want them to think that. So I close it fairly at this point. This allows me to over display, over prove those aces going in nice and fairly like this. And I push them in. And I'm careful not to do any dodgy moves. I like this idea of riffling so that you can see those aces flicker past. Once again, over proving that they are in the deck. At this point, because I've opted for a Greek deal, I like to simply turn the deck face up for a moment as I straighten the deck. This shows the bottom playing card, but it also shows that I'm holding no breaks because I'm straightening everything up. And I hold it here for just a beat. Now when I put it face down in my hand, I'm going to move that nine of clubs slightly into my hand under my thumb here. This is now set up for a Greek deal. Now all that's left for me to do is four consecutive Greek deals. One, two, three, four. As I take the fourth card, I close the deck so that there is no discrepancy with that nine of clubs. Straight away, I turn the deck face up and I spread it across the table. One, to prove that there are no other aces, more so to prove that there are no face down playing cards, which proves that these cards apparently came from this deck. One last thing to do, turn these cards over to show that yes, indeed they are from this deck. This will allow our participant to go back in time to the moment when we take, took them out to begin with and believe that these are of the same deck. We are left with the one discrepancy that I never worry about and I never clean up. You don't run unless you're being chased. The discrepancy is the queens. But remember, I took the queens out from the beginning. So visually at this point, there are no discrepancies. Yes, there are four queens in this deck, but nobody's looking for queens. So nobody's gonna, sus nobody's gonna suspect that those queens are deceptive. For anyone, maniacal enough to want to check the deck you're just gonna say stop don't do it go away <laughs> now for those who want to actually clean up and want to get rid of those queens there's this silly idea that's hard to teach and it's the art of nature of being natural and in that moment which would be to kind of overprove which this which is why i don't like to do this which is to overprove by picking up slugs or packets of the deck up to the queen so i'm gonna pick this deck up here and, and go through them and say look no cards uh, the wrong way around I can show the backs I'm just not going to show the back of the queen meanwhile I've got the queen here in position where I need it at the bottom do the same with this packet up to the next queen and as I pick this one up I then go to the other so I've got a queen on top now so now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to put these together show the backs of these as I put them down like this and I'll show the backs of some of these as I put them down now I can scoop these underneath so I put three queens together but I've left them in a way that I can get to them I've left them wide open and the same Again, just picking these put these up as two packets showing both sides like this like this put these down and then now I've managed to put all the Queens relatively close enough to each other at this point people should be happy enough that there is no discrepancies however this silly bit that I'm teaching now I would have completely advise against it because the overproving is gonna make your audience think hold on a second why is he doing that so Going back to my initial statement, which I'll stand by, anybody who says, let me check that deck, you have to say, stop, 
go home, you're drunk. And, and even saying all that, this isn't necessarily a performance that you're going to do in front of that kind of situation where people are going to want to um, check the deck afterwards. Um, most of what I do these days is on film, so there's nobody here to do that other than Susan Sausage, and she is a pain in my sausage. Now, the two biggest elephants in this room right now, Daniel Madison, one, where the hell are we going to get these playing cards from? These gaffs, ace on the one side, queens on the others. Two, can't do a Greek deal. Thanks for that, Madison. You can replace this for a bottom deal. Can't do a bottom deal. Thanks for that, Madison. Why haven't you taught it on your YouTube channel? I haven't taught the bottom deal or the Greek deal on my YouTube channel because my bottom deal masterclass is five hours long. The bottom deal is arguably the most difficult slide to learn and master and it can't be taught in a simple YouTube tutorial. So if you see a YouTube tutorial that teaches the bottom deal in 10 minutes, maybe watch it, but don't take it seriously. It's a big deal. No pun intended. My masterclass series at my website, it's all taught in there if you want to learn that. Once you've learned and mastered the bottom deal, then you can move on to the Greek deal and you will find the Greek deal so much more easier. Unfortunately, there are no other methods that I would be happy teaching on this channel to achieve the same thing. There are other methods, obviously. There are plenty of other methods to achieve this, but none as clean or as crisp as this performance in my humble opinion. Charlie. And we end on this uncomfortable note of how a apparently incredible performance of a deceptive technique can itself be a deception, which is the whole point of deception. This tattoo right here, upcomque Latin, by any means necessary. My intention with this is to offer a demonstration of something which appears impossible, but I'm a teacher of deception. I'm a deception artist. I'm a deception teacher. I'm a professor for F swear words sake. I'm a sage, Charlie. <laughs> so teaching deception is what I do. Learning deception is what you do. And if it takes being deceptive within your performances in order to demonstrate and perform something that seems impossible, is that not just what magic is? Do you know what I mean? By any means necessary, whatever it takes is all about that final performance. The screen is my digital theater. And it doesn't matter which method you use, if you can do a the same trick with two different slides. One of them is so easy self-working, and another one involves a very difficult sleight of hand. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go with the easiest possible method, no matter your skill level, no matter if you're an expert or a beginner, always choose the easiest method because you need to make sure that you do not ever compromise the deception within the performance. It is all about the performance and how it appears on that final show, on that final digital theater, at least in my case. For anybody who, for anybody possibly let down by this deceptive deception, then you probably still believe in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Sorry, did I spoil the secret for you? Two girls talking about the devil. But one of them says to the other, don't be silly, it's just like Santa Claus. It's just your dad. I'm Daniel Madison. I'm Daddy Madison. I'll see you next time.